Hello! There are so many aspects to consider when it comes to supplements, especially since not all supplements are created equal and the industry overall is extremely unregulated. So today I'm sharing everything there is to know about supplements, what supplements I take based on the science that's available, and also what to look out for when you're choosing a new supplement. So let's start by talking about the supplements I personally take. If you want to know more about how to choose the right supplements and make sure that they're potent and not dangerous for you, you can just skip to the end of the video. I've been vegan for about eight years, but I haven't eaten meat in 14 years. So a very important supplement for me is B12. Not only for vegans and vegetarians, but many people don't get enough B12 in their diet. So B12 is extremely important for our health and it can have very serious consequences if you don't get enough. This is the vitamin B12 that I take. It's extremely affordable. I only take two capsules a week, so not a lot, so it lasts me for a very long time. A surprising fact about B12 specifically is that the synthetic version actually has a greater bioavailability compared to the natural version. So it's easier for us as humans to absorb the synthetic version of B12. It's also a lot more affordable. Another thing worth noting about B12 is that it's actually best taken on an empty stomach. I take it before breakfast, but not in combination with tea, twice a week. The second vitamin I take on a weekly basis is iodine. I don't eat salt, so I don't get any salt with iodine in it, and I also don't really like seaweed. So iodine as a supplement is for now my best solution. I like this liquid form of iodine since it's 100% iodine and doesn't contain any additional ingredients. So for the moment, I supplement daily with iodine, but in the future, I hope to eat seaweed instead. The third vitamin I take on a daily basis is vitamin D. It's currently winter in New Zealand, so we don't get as much sun, so I take vitamin D daily. But I only take vitamin D during the winter. In summer, I prefer to get vitamin D from sun exposure early in the morning. There's this chart that I like to refer to to see how much sun exposure you need depending on where you are in the world and depending on your skin tone. So for me, I don't need to spend a lot of time in the sun, especially not in New Zealand, but for example, if you live in Scandinavia, you might have to be in the sun for a bit longer. The fourth supplement I take, I take on a weekly basis, and that is Brazil nuts. So not a supplement per se, but it is a supplement in the form of adding extra selenium into my diet. So at the moment, just to be safe, since it has absolutely no side effects, I take one Brazil nut a week. The last supplement I take on a weekly basis and very regularly is DHA and EPA. The one I normally buy was out of stock, so this is the one I'm having at the moment. It's by the same brand, but the dosage is a little bit different, and I do prefer the other one. I'll link that in the description below. This supplement is for brain health, and it's really, really important for a healthy brain and healthy cognitive function as we age. However, the science isn't 100% conclusive yet for vegans and vegetarians and the long-term effects, and if we do need to take this, but there are not really any side effects from taking this daily and it can be beneficial for you. So at the moment, I take one every day. The last supplement I do wanna mention because I take it from time to time and that is this Floridix Iron Supplement. Iron supplements actually have an incredible dark story. I'll leave some links in the description below if you want to learn more about iron supplements, but they have been proven to have some of them very harmful side effects. So I make sure to stick with this brand that I really trust. It's also 100% natural. It comes with a vegan version and it comes in a non-vegan version. So one has honey and one comes without honey. So I just get the vegan version. And um, yeah, I've been taking this since I was a little child. I normally take it around my periods. I only take this supplement if I feel extremely fatigued, like I actually did last month. And I only take it if I'm not eating, if I know I'm not eating enough kale, tofu, and other really good sources of iron. So those are all the supplements I'll take on a weekly, daily, or monthly basis. But what's really important is to know that your supplements are safe to take and that they contain what they promise. Unfortunately, the supplement industry has harmed a lot of people, so it's really important to check a few things before you try a new supplement. So the first thing that I always check, and this is the most important thing when it comes to supplements, and that is to check if it's tested by a third-party agency and what the results were. I always use this website to check my supplements and that is also how I choose which supplement to buy. And as you can see here, this is the vitamin B12 that I take. But if you look at the comparisons, a lot of the B12s are not created equal. Apart from the fact that the supplement might not have the same potency as advertised, a bigger danger is other ingredients such as heavy metal contamination or ingredients that simply aren't listed. 
So I recommend to always check this website before you buy a supplement just to make sure that it actually contains what's advertised. And then I also make sure to never buy any supplements that doesn't have this certification. The second thing I check when it comes to supplements is that it doesn't contain any animal products. I've been vegan for about eight years, so for me it's really important that my supplements doesn't contain any animal products or byproducts. And the third thing I always check is the additional ingredients. So I try my best to avoid sweeteners. For example, this B12 has a lot of ingredients I don't necessarily like, but it's one of the only options and it's one of the most affordable ones and it's such small quantities, so for the moment I haven't found a better alternative. However, one additive I always make sure to avoid is carrageenan because of its potential side effects. So I don't take any supplements with that and then I try my best to find as natural and healthy and sustainable supplements as possible. Another key thing for choosing which supplements to take is to focus on whole foods first and approaching it in a science-based manner. I try to avoid unnecessary supplements and so-called superfoods mainly because of the unregulated market. Oftentimes you buy something and it might not contain what it says it does. Another thing I think is really important to remember when it comes to superfoods and supplements and that is that if we end up eating lots of powders and supplements and things that aren't food we might not get enough nutrients that we need from real whole food sources and that might create negative and harmful effects on our health. I actually have seen this behavior quite often, people eating charcoal powder and moringa powder and one powder after the other, powdered apple juice, and then when you eat all this food you might not get as hungry because it often has sweeteners and it often tastes quite good, but then you don't actually eat what you need to eat which is healthy and nutritional whole food. And the final thing I really try to focus on is to avoid any marketing or temptation when it comes to supplements. I find the supplement industry to be quite similar to the beauty industry and they have all these promises and they work with lots of influencers and celebrities, but the thing is you oftentimes don't need these supplements and they're not going to make you healthier. So I really hope you like this video. All the sources cited and all the supplements I take are linked in the description below if you want to check them out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And I'd also love to hear what supplements you take on a daily or weekly basis.